Good morning, St. Andrew. It is terrific to be here to talk about The Voice. Have any of you watched that lately on television? Kind of caught myself if I'm home on that night. I'm not even sure what night it's on and if I happen to stop on the flipping through the channel. Oh, there it is. It's kind of an interesting show where you have, this is the logo for the show, and you've got the four entertainers, the four singers that are professional, and um, novices come on, amateurs come on, and sing, do their best, hoping that someone in one of the chairs will turn around because their backs are to them while they're singing, and they're hoping that they'll turn around, which means that they're going to offer to sponsor them, to kind of produce them through the whole program and perhaps help them to win the grand prize, the voice, as they are listening to the voices of the ones singing. Maybe some of you might remember one of them. I'm an Indiana Jones fan, and you may remember the last crusade. There's a scene in there where they have done all the stuff, the temple, they're in the temple and they're trying to get out. And Indiana Jones kind of had the chalice that they were really after, but in the process it's dropped and it goes down into a crevice and he's trying to reach down and grab it, being the Indiana Jones that he is. Let's watch and look for a voice in this. Junior, give me your other hand. I can't hold on. I can almost reach it, Dad. Indiana? Indiana? Let it go. Indiana? Let it go. He knew that wasn't just a voice of somebody. That was his dad now speaking. You heard his voice. And he did. Took the other hand and got him. And they were able to, his dad was able to pull him up and save him, of course. Great story. Great movie. Great episode. Lent is all about Jesus coming into the world as my Savior, your Savior, as we say in the introduction. A Savior who came to suffer to die for my sins and my sinfulness, to draw me into a relationship with himself for all eternity. That's what it's all about. He also came to bring us himself and his loving grace, supernatural authority, and his empowerment, his empowerment for my life. This is called the voice because I believe God still speaks. He speaks very clearly to us today. And my concern in this sermon is that we recognize that, that we listen for that voice, and that we respond to that voice. Now, I will tell you up front, a little bit of a bias on my part, that sometimes when people come to me and say, I heard God speak to me, and I'm, I immediately, my, my guard goes up, and, and there's a little bit of me that wonders, so is he cranking some kind of a loudspeaker, some kind of a down out of the sky? and gets it down close to my ear, Paul, oh, this is God speaking. I always wonder because sometimes we hear some people saying, I heard God say to me, and we hear all kinds of weird things that God said. God said to me, and we hear it. If what God says to you does not balance with what's in this book, the Bible, you need to be very careful about that probably not being God speaking. This is God's true, inspired, inerrant word. And anything that goes particularly contradictory to this, we need to be very, we need to turn away from that. We need to question it at least. Turn away from it. My goal today is to help us to see, so how does God speak to us today? How, how does his voice come to I believe he does speak to us very clearly, as we said. Proverbs 2 says that, Seeking wisdom takes effort. And Scripture tells us where it can be found. The Bible tells us where that. It says, for the Lord gives wisdom. The Lord gives us wisdom. From his mouth come knowledge and understanding. He isn't storing up wisdom for himself. He stores up sound wisdom for the upright. He loves to share his wisdom with us. So that our ignorance can become a little less of our ignorance 
and his wisdom can become a little bit more of us, would that be your prayer as well as mine? Lord, rid me of my ignorance and fill me with more of your wisdom. Well, and of course, the source to go to for that is the scriptures. But we're going to talk about that. What can I learn if I really listen to his voice speaking to me? Number one, Jesus speaks an announcement. We're going to look at the reading that you just heard. How many times did you hear Jesus speaking? A number of times in a number of situations, a number of settings. Jesus speaks. Things happen. People respond. Even the demons respond. Jesus speaks. Jesus continues to speak. Jesus speaks an announcement is the blank that you're looking to fill in there. When he said the, the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. The word gospel means good news. Particularly good news about Jesus. Jesus needs to be in that word that's spoken. As Romans chapter 10 points out. The kingdom of God is God's rule and reign in heaven. And Jesus is saying, now that is here, right here and now where I am. We, we're bringing this to you. The kingdom of heaven is, in a sense, here. The kingdom of God is here. So the good news of the gospel. You know, it says in the process of listening, we're to be in the process of repenting. What a great season. This is a great lesson for the first Sunday in Lent. Because Lent is that time when we, we are to, to really focus in on the fact that I am a sinner. And that is the reason that Jesus Christ came into the world. That's the reason his heavenly father sent him into the world. Gave him to the world. Gave him to us that he might come and help me to turn from my sinfulness. Turn to him as he would draw me to himself into a relationship that will lead me into eternity with him that starts right now. This side of heaven and leads all the way into eternity with him in heaven. Repent is more than just saying, Father, forgive me. If we leave our repentance with the words that we spoke in our confession, we have not repented. We have only expressed remorse. We've expressed words of repentance. But we have not repented. Repenting is me walking this way. And all of a sudden I do an about face. That's repentance. Turning from that which I was doing. Turning from that. It may not always be that quickly. And it's certainly seldom ever that easy to turn. And we cannot do the turning from the wrong way to God's way without Christ's help. That's the reason he came. I am here to help you with that. I'm here to be in that turning with you. I've forgiven you your sin. I'm loving you. I'm filling you with my grace. Now let's turn from the wrong way to God's way. Is the gospel, the question I ask, is the gospel, the good news, really for me? Do I hear the good news? Do I rejoice in that good news? Am I receiving that good news for myself? Do I believe it? Or do I just hear it and it's just nice to think about and nice to come to, to church and be with friends and be with people and sing the songs? Or am I really hearing that God so loves me, that God so loves you, that he truly did give his only son, that as you believe in him, you do have eternal life? I hope you're open to that today maybe for the first time, or that you're refreshed in that good news about Jesus Christ. Number two, Jesus speaks a call. He speaks a calling, you might say. When, when he said, follow me to, to the, to the four, four guys, the two sets of brothers. You know, he talked to Peter and John. He talked to James and John. And he said, follow me. I'm going to make you fishers of men. You know when was the last time I really listened to his call for me? I think the words of Jesus that he speaks are not just nice words on the pages inside this nice covers of the Bibles that we carry around with us. These words are for us. We believe the Holy Spirit is alive in the words in these scriptures. 
So I think it's exciting to let the words that Jesus speaks to someone else in the scriptures, he speaks those same words to me. So when he's saying to the, to the people in the scriptures, follow me, he's saying that to us. Would you follow me? I invite you to follow me in your life with all that you are. Follow me and put our name in the place of the people that he's speaking to. So when was the last time I really listened to his call for me? You know, I agree with Bill Hybels on this, on this part. I believe sometimes the way this happens, we may not hear a real clear voice. The voices in the scriptures, the words in the pages of the scriptures, may not come all that clear to us. But sometimes it comes in the form of a nudge. It comes in the form of a brainstorm. It comes in the form of an urge that just kind of pops into our mind. And sometimes at the most seemingly inappropriate place, it may be a traffic light. It may be standing in line for this or for that. It may be as we're talking or thinking about something else, all of a sudden there is that thought, zing, and it just comes right in. It's like, where did that come from? I know I'm not the only one that has those kind of thoughts. I know I'm not the only one. A nudge, an urge, a quiet whisper of the Holy Spirit. That's a voice speaking to us. Don't shut that down. Don't disregard that. Listen to that and try to respond. When was the last time I really listened? You know, there is a, a verse in Psalm 46 that says, Be still. Be still and know that I am God. I think sometimes when we find those opportunities of being still, even in the midst of the chaos, again, when traffic stops, and there we are. When we're, when we're waiting someplace, in a doctor's office, in some office, or we're just waiting, we have a few minutes at home. We stop, listen, Lord, let me hear you. Let me sense you. Let me feel your love. You know, and then as we hear the voice, another part of our prayer, another part of our whole life is, Lord, when you're speaking to me, not only help me to hear you, help me to not only know that it's you speaking to me, but Lord, when I hear, let me respond. That's a big step. You know, Peter heard Jesus speak to him when Peter said, Jesus, just tell me, and I'll come to you on the water. When he was in the boat, and Jesus said, come on. Oh, there was an answer to prayer. Just tell him. He answered, but then Peter had to hear him say it, and then he had to be willing to stand up and respond to what he heard. I believe Jesus enabled him to do that. So Jesus not only speaks to us, not only calls us, not only invites us, not only nudges us, not only urges us, but he enables us to respond to the nudge and to the urging. Number three, he teaches as he speaks. He teaches. Are we being taught? You know, and they went to Capernaum, and immediately on the Sabbath, he entered the synagogue and was teaching. And they were astonished at his teaching. For he taught them as one who had authority. He wasn't quoting anybody else. Ha! He was the origination of the word itself, of the truth that was coming forward. He was the teacher. Now we seek to quote him. But he came with one of authority and spoke right to the hearts and the lives and the living of the individuals that were there. Right to it. Those words still do that today when, when, we, when we allow that. Through our readings of the scriptures, through our devotional life, through our, the Luther and I ministry books, those of you that have the, those are really good books, those devotional books for Lent. If you've not picked those up, I believe there's still some out there on the table, or you can go to lhm.org, lutheranourministry.org, and find those books online and kind of carry them with you right there on your non-dumb phones and all those kinds of things. But at, and at, as we're, maybe even in our small groups, it's another opportunity to hear. Sometimes when we hear someone else say something, a comment that's made, a reflection that's made on a scripture, a testimony, a sharing, a prayer, it speaks to us. God uses all kinds of ways to come to us. 
So, you know, even Helmut Tillichy, who was a theologian in Germany back in the day, back in World War II and all that, was an incredible theologian, wonderful, wonderful Lutheran theologian. He would sometimes have the comment that was pointed out in Daily Bread the other day that he, he sought to answer the question, is there any word from the Lord? Is there any word from the Lord about this, for this, with this situation? Is there any word from the Lord? And I believe as we dig into the scriptures, as we become biblical bookworms, as we become prayer warriors, that we're going to find that there is a word from the Lord for this situation, for this life that we're living. Whenever we open the Bible, whenever we listen to a sermon, Lord willing, or pause to pray, it's a wonderful practice to say, Lord Jesus, speak to me. I'm ready to listen and eager to obey. Would you help me to do that? Am I really letting myself be taught by his teaching? Or am I just reading it? Am I just being, just kind of observing that it's there? Well, that's a nice teaching. Am I letting that teaching really take hold of me? Number four, he speaks with rebuke to evil. All of us are dealing with some kind of evil in our lives. We can't help it this side of heaven. There's evil in our lives, evil around our lives, evil about our lives, evil with our lives. It's all somehow or other evil is there. We need to understand Christ has power over all evil. Do you renounce the devil and all his works and all his ways? If so, then say yes. Oh, wow. I'm going to back up. Whoa. We need a little bit more confidence and maybe I didn't set that up right. Do you renounce the devil and all his works and all his ways? If so, then say yes. yes. Whoa. Good. That power was worked in you in your baptism. But I forget it too. I totally forget it. And I was old enough to remember. I was 14 when I was baptized. I got to answer that question myself. And a confirmed man's answered for themselves when you're confirmed. Do you renounce the devil and all his works and all his ways? If so, then say, yes. yes. A little slow on the uptake, and I'm not good setting you up. Maybe I'm not setting you up right. That's all right. That's all right. I think we've got it. Because he who is in us is greater than than he who's in the world. Jesus not only handles evil in the scriptures, in our nice, wonderful Bible stories, he handles evil in our lives today. When we draw on him, when we draw on the power of his name, the power of his blood, the power of his gospel, and we let his rebuke, Lord, I call upon you to help me deal with this evil. Help me to see the demon. Help me to know the problem. And then, Lord, you help me with this habit that, I know is wrong, but I keep on doing it. keeps snaring me back and snaring me back. Lord, there's an addiction that I have. Oh, it's not stuff that I drink or stuff that I swallow or stuff that I sniff or shoot up, but it's really an addiction that's grabbed a hold of me on the computer, in a book, whatever, wherever it is. I have a hurt that I'm not letting go of. I've hurt someone, and I don't know what to do about it. I've, someone's hurt me, and I don't know how to deal with that hurt. Or I've got a real hang-up with this person, with this situation, with this stuff in my life. And, Lord, it's bigger than I am. And Jesus says, yeah, it is, but it's not bigger than me. It's not bigger than me. Just as Jesus rebuked the demons in this scripture reading earlier, so can we call upon him, Lord, I need your help. Help me to find the people help me to find your word help me to know that you're here with me lord help me in this you know am i going to jesus to ask him to contend with the evil in my life with all these things and that's the reason we we want to be here to, that we call ourselves a recovering congregation we're all recovering from something we all are and we have a lord that's here to help us to recover that's the reason he came that's part of what repentance is that's what living in the gospel, the side of heaven is, is always recovering from the stuff that we're dealing with. That's the reason we have Celebrate Recovery to help us focus on that, to focus on that recovery and to help you in whatever area that may be 
uh, whatever area is there, we can join with you and come together and help you with that. Lord, help us to be still. Help us to be still and know that you are God. So we have some questions for extending the conversation for you to look at when you go out to lunch, maybe in your small group or maybe at home around the table or just for your own self-reflection. What are my answers to the questions at the end of each part of this outline that we looked at? Does Jesus still speak with a voice that I can hear? How do I know the voice I might hear is really that of Jesus? If I'm listening to Jesus' voice, what am I doing about what I hear? So as we conclude, would you stand with me and join me in prayer?